Another day of protests here in Cleveland and across the country. Good evening from my home. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lena Lai. The lives of George Floyd and Desmond Franklin are remembered by thousands tonight. A second Saturday of, of protests, although this time it was much different than what happened one week ago today. Danielle Serino begins our team coverage in Cleveland. Despite the fact that the protest was called for 2 o'clock, people started gathering after 1, and the crowd grew to several hundred, and we came prepared in case things turned violent. None of that was needed, though, even though rhetoric got pretty heated at times as protesters yelled anti-police comments. Franklin was shot to death by an off-duty police officer after an argument outside a convenience store on Pearl Road. Protesters gathered outside the 2nd District where the officer worked before being reassigned. Then they marched several blocks away to the spot where Franklin died. I think it's great that people are actually exercising their constitutional right to protest, um, to let the city of Cleveland and the chief of police know that they are going to hold them accountable. One thing that's very clear is that these protests are not going to stop over police-involved killings. They say they will continue until their voices are heard, and they believe they will be and that justice will be served given today's political climate. Reporting from the 2nd District Police Station, I'm Danielle Serino, 3 News. Thanks, Danielle. Now to Parma, where dozens of people showed up for a peaceful demonstration there. The mayor and other Parma community leaders were on hand for the rally as well. They marched against police brutality and in memory of George Floyd. And the Cadell Recreation Center on Cleveland's west side was the scene of a rally today in memory of Tamir Rice. The 12 year old was shot and killed by Cleveland police while he was playing with an airsoft pellet gun outside the rec center six years ago. Tamir would have turned 18 years old later this month. And tonight, a local community with a long history of racial integration is also planning a special vigil with a peaceful candlelight demonstration. Drew Horansky continues our live team coverage now from Shaker Heights. Good evening, Drew. Good evening to you, Lena, and what a beautiful afternoon to be live outside. We are at Gridley Triangle Park in Shaker Heights, of course, not too far from the Van Aken District, where tonight at 8 o'clock there will be a candlelight vigil. As you can see behind me, not a very big space here, but they plan to pack it in as best they can. And there will be speakers here, including members of City Council as well as the school board. The demonstration here is open to anyone who comes in the spirit of peace. They will be calling on people in positions of power to make change. And it's going to take a more proactive approach for those in power to really recognize, uh, address, and try to diffuse uh, those frustrations before they get to the point that uh, they result in violence or uh, some sort of uh, uh, activity that uh, destroys property. Because right now, now more than ever, uh, across the country and right here in Cleveland, we need to really have a new conversation about not reforming our police system, but we got to transform it because the current model is not working. This week, members of Cleveland City Council unanimously declared racism a public health crisis. Lena, I asked if Shaker Heights has any plans to do anything similar here. They tell me that on Monday night, they will be introducing a resolution to create constructive dialogue in the hope of dealing with ra racism head on. And of course, the hope is, is that something more positive structured can come out of that. We'll keep you posted. Yes. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Drew.